today. Konami announced a bunch of stuff for Silent Hill and we got Beej to cover it. Let's see how that goes. This is Checkpoint. Welcome to Checkpoint, where sometimes we're a day late and a dollar short. And that's why I shit on company time. I've been meaning to ask, are you okay? Oh, no. Gosh, no. All right. Tough to make fun of this without sounding like we're just advertising it, but if you're Australian and play Overwatch and like McDonald's, you can get yourself an epic tracer skin for Overwatch 2. To clarify, that's epic in the technical term of how Overwatch ranks their skins, not to imply that it follows the dictionary definition of beyond the scope of ordinary, since it's just kind of a weird little skin with lots of neon yellow and a blonde mohawk that makes Tracer look like a festival twink. And yes, this is exclusive to McDonald's in Australia, meaning you can only get it by ordering through the My Macca's mobile app, because Australia is the kind of country that will just softly bully a corporation into changing their branding, which is why this skin is so disappointing. If this is exclusive to McDonald's, I want to see Tracer in a Mayor McCheese hat with the golden arches glowing in her chronal accelerator and shooting french fries from her pistols. If you're going capitalist dystopia, at least commit to it. Cheers, love! We've got Brecky this Arvo! It's Mortal Kombat's 30th anniversary, and to mark the occasion, the gore-filled pinnacle of 1v1 fighting is... Getting another video game, developer NetherRealm Studios is making a spin-off of the regular Mortal Kombat formula to create Mortal Kombat Onslaught, a role-playing game. A Mortal Kombat RPG? That's a new spin on what's that? It's a, it's a collection role-playing game? Uh, where you build teams of characters for massive real-time group battles? That's kind of Pokemon-ish. Oh, it's for mobile. This is a mobile game. It goes on your phone. Remember, we have phones, right? Onslaught will also feature a kinematic story, and we've seen what it's like when Mortal Kombat comes to theaters, so calibrate your expectations accordingly. It's not clear whether Onslaught is set in the volcanic pits of the nether realm, but inferring from the description, I have a feeling anyone playing this will definitely be spending some time in gotcha hell. Let's keep it light with a fresh round of reading the patch notes. This time, it's Disney Dreamlight Valley, Gameloft's friendship-focused life simulator that's kind of like an Animal Crossy, Harvest Moonish, decorating an urban planning game combined with a Persona game's social links, but all your friends are characters from the broad-ranging Disney canon, be they hero or villain, because they can't remember if they're supposed to be evil or not. The game isn't early access at the moment, but you can, of course, buy Founders Packs, item redemption for which was among the myriad notes from the October 18th patch, but nowhere near the funniest. Some choice cuts include Tableware can now be selected properly. No word yet on when to use the soup spoon. Campfires now emit sound, which will surely help general ambiance. Donald Duck will now have shorter tantrums. Kingdom Hearts fans presumably rejoice. Made Ursula easier to talk to. A change I feel would be useful for many folks in real life. Fixed instances of characters fishing the wrong way, implying there's a right way, which sounds awfully gatekeepy, Disney. Rain will now properly water plants, an IRL update we've locally been hoping for here since August. And fixed an issue that affected Mickey's eyes because apparently his eyes looked creepy and murderous in-game. And while the mouse would absolutely skin you and wear your leather like a cloak if he thought it might add a couple Disney Plus subscriptions, that's not the tone Dreamlight Valley was going for. Konami took a break from Pachinko and held a big Silent Hill event earlier this week. Silent Hill, you'll remember, is the inspiration behind the fan-favorite blockbuster playable trailer P.T., which recently got hacked onto an unmodified PS5 using a second jailbroken PS5. So if you think you had trouble finding one PS5 before, well, it turns out you'll need two to play the only game from the Sony catalog that doubles the price of the PS4 it's sitting on. But I digress. The Silent Hill event was filled with a bunch of good news for Silent Hill fans, including really nice figurines or statues or some sort of standable figure of two characters from Silent Hill, uh, James Sunderland and Mario from Silent Hill 2. 
No word on whether Mario's statue will be voiced by Chris Pratt. Also, the dog is getting a plush. You know, the, the mastermind dog from the comedy ending. Ah, it sure was a great ending. And the dog plush looks great. They really nailed the design, right? Silent Hill is also getting a movie. They're calling it Return to Silent Hill, which makes sense because they made all those Silent Hill video games. So it's nice to see the franchise finally come to the big screen. Most importantly, there are new Silent Hill video games coming. Silent Hill Townfall is purported to be something different in the series. This will probably take place near the little town that's next to this Silent Hill that everything keeps happening on. And uh, Silent Hill F is a new mainline series game that features a girl taking a drag on a pipe and eating flowers. Okay, fine, I can't keep doing this. You figured it out. I didn't watch any of the trailers. I didn't attend the event. I only read the bits of the article I could make out while flipping back and forth between the story tab and a tab with a basket of cute animals. I hate horror games. I have never and will never play a Silent Hill game. I wrote this story at 3 a.m. alone at my kitchen table with only a single light on. I would have turned on more lights, but that would have meant getting out of my chair, which of course would have alerted the monsters. And one time when I flipped back to the Silent Hill tab and accidentally clicked on one of the trailers, the compressor for my fridge started grinding and I freaked out, jumped up, tried to wave dash out of my chair, got caught in my headphones and ran face first into the wall next to my bathroom door, which woke up my wife, who came outside to laugh at me. I'm sorry I couldn't give you the news, everyone. You're just going to have to go Google Silent Hill Media Event or something yourself. And now that's on you. I'm not responsible if when you watch a trailer, Pyramid Guy eats your brains with his pyramid hands. When when I asked if you were all right, I just meant like gastrointestinally. But um, you all right? He's always judging you with his pyramid eyes. Uh, well, hey, as long as Bloober Team doesn't add some of their typical deeply troubling takes on mental health, I'm excited to check out the remake. His pyramid ass. Coming up, Netflix is apparently even more committed to cloud gaming, saying, quote, It was fun to play games on Stadia, but it had some issues with the business model. Which is rich coming from a company that doesn't seem to understand their own business model. I need everyone at home to be aware, as I am now, that for the Mortal Kombat story. Oh. Mm-hmm. Because we, we have a teleprompter uh, that... Beach wrote that story with K's in place of every C. Mm -hmm. So we're, there were words in there like accordingly and collection mm -hmm. and yep. clear. And they're all they're all spelled with K's. Every single one. Yeah. Yeah. I even Which had is to do a only work like on cinematic. <laughs> yeah. And that's only as you're just making it more difficult for you. Really? It's true. Yeah. Sometimes I just write jokes that are for me, and and really, mm -hmm. that was a joke for us. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, also now you get to enjoy I, it. I wanted to share that. I'm, yeah. I'm happy that you did. Yeah. So, hey, the big story yeah. that we didn't talk about yes. uh, is the Bayonetta 3 voice acting. Which thing. has absorbed basically the bulk of, like, video game Twitter for the last week. Yeah. Yeah. And a couple of reasons that we didn't didn't do that one is that it's just getting more complicated yeah um uh that's uh, that's the main reason yeah. but also like don't really know exactly what we would say about it that in its current state because currently yeah it's in a state where uh jason scryer who's like one of the most like reliable games journalists in terms of you know like sourcing sources and, and, and accuracy. trustworthiness yeah. and accuracy is like I have seen documentation that shows what she was actually offered. And Helena Taylor? I think so. Uh, has said, that's a lie. Yeah. And so we're sort of at this kind of loggerheads of... Yeah, who's who's actually impasse. telling the truth? Yeah. Has there been a miscommunication? Also, the, 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 the Twitter's a terrible place. Yeah. Uh, it won't be better once Elon gets a hold of it. But yeah. uh, you and know, we're all on Mastodon now. So. Yeah. The uh, the the um, people responding to to Jason Scryer being like, 
like post the proof and he's like i can't post the I can't post a screenshot of the proof without burning a source. Yeah. And people are like, oh, okay, so the source is just trust me, bro. And it's like, you don't understand journalism. Yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> I know children. There is that there is that thing of like trust then verify, right? Like the yeah. the the by and large the idea of like, well, you get a source mm -hmm. and then that source tells you here's what's going on. Uh, and then you're like, okay, cool. I believe what it is that you're telling me yeah. because we, that's the premise of the of a story I'm probably going to write. So now I'm going to go verify that you have told me the truth mm -hmm. because I trust what you're saying. It's enough to get me to actually keep going, but I need to verify this is going on. And so the hope is that uh, Scryer's following that same um, methodology, that it's like, yeah. I have a source, they've showed me this thing that I'm that I can't share with anybody else. And really showing me is kind of like deep throaty a little bit, right? Yeah. Like it's kind of like giving me this information is not something that I should be getting, but it's something that's, I think to settle this issue is maybe important to be seeing, but I would need to talk to somebody at platinum uh, who's willing to, to, who's willing to at least say to me that it's like, you know, um, if there's anything wrong with the source, you know, just, uh, just hang up the phone, but otherwise just stay on the line. Okay. Is there something wrong with the source? Hello? Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> okay, great. Click. You know, like, I love All the President's Men. It's such a good movie. But it's like, <laughs> if that's what he needs to do, then that's what that's what he would need to do. And I'm like, I'm he wouldn't hoping have, he that wouldn't it's not have reported going... on it if he didn't believe it was real. And it's great. Yeah, and it's the thing. It's kind of like we've moved beyond this thing of like, of it's now it's just an issue to do with oh a voice actor has been replaced on a game mm -hmm. and it comes down to a funding thing and isn't it bad that that's a thing but now it's also moved on to this meta story of do we believe the reporting that's coming out of the story in the first place and yeah. who knows who's telling the truth and I'm kind of like ah shit I hate when people get this way about journalism and I know it's important and, to be skeptical but Jesus and like this is the thing. This is my my take, my hot take. My this is a lukewarm, tepid, <laughs> freezing cold take. Frankly, uh, is that voice actors should be paid more and they should get residuals because yeah. act, other actors, writers in other industries get better pay and residuals. And the whole voice acting industry went on strike like what twelve years ago? I think so. Yeah, whatever it was, the like like ages ago, you know, to for this and it did nothing, right? Yeah. And so like. Fundamentally, I sympathize with what Helena Taylor is complaining about and trying to do. Yeah. Uh, but it seems like she uh, might have gone about it in a not helpful way. Yeah. Ultimately, right? Yeah. At the time, probably it was like, this is what I'll do and it will help. I'm sure that, also was, the, like, that was the intention. The, like, the, the, the aspect that, like, Jennifer Hale is not Bayonetta and it is, you know, she, she, she shouldn't be allowed to you know, to sign merchandise as Bayonetta because I'm Bayonetta. And then now Jennifer Hale, who had no idea about any of this and is yeah. clearly under NDA, uh, is now like getting like harassed. Yeah. And it's like, Jennifer Hale is not at fault here. No. Right? Is, no. You, <laughs> I know you there's can tell that... there's, uh, she hasn't said anything. Right. But she's been liking tweets that are like, that are saying things like, Jennifer Hale is probably under NDA and can't talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like, the, 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 it's a great use of the Twitter like system. It's just sort of like, oh, that's an interesting thought. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying anything about it, but what, what an interesting thought <laughs> yeah, that yeah. I could, I might be under NDA. What a, oh, interesting. Uh, <laughs> Jennifer Hale actually did release a statement. Oh, she, she did. She's saying that she's under NDA. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> there we go. She, like, she just, what she just said that, Basically, like I don't, I'm not, I'm not involved in this. Yeah. Oh, I bet you that I can't. I, I do can't, not wish to be included in this narrative. Yeah, I, I can't, <laughs> but I, uh, uh, I can't give any more information yeah. due to India. I bet, sense. I bet there was a moment where she was like, "I'm just gonna go. I need to go confirm with my agent something." And then was like, "Can I say this?" And they're like, "You can," or a publicist or ever assuming like, "You can literally, you're allowed to legally, you can say these lines." <laughs> yeah. Then let's get a statement out there because I need to stop being a target. It's like, yeah, you bet. <laughs> I've never been a huge silent hill fanboy but uh the silent hill 2 remake looks neat mm -hmm. um but i do with what i said in the thing there bloober team for me has a interesting track record so it's like it, if it looks from that from the video that you didn't watch yeah uh it looks like there's a lot of the original creative people still involved at a high level mm. so if all bloober team is doing is basically just like handling 
a, a remake of what was already there, yeah. then great. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they're sort of getting getting their creative grubby pause in it then i'm going to be like a little more reticent but right i'll probably still check it out yeah. also just been... nice to have a game for ps5 sure absolutely <laughs> i mean you could always play pt that's true i do i i have one of those ps4s yeah i have a i i never played it but i installed pt on my ps4 yeah before it got taken down because you are a savvy investor yes yes <laughs> And that's what video games are. The the it's the early NFT. <laughs> it's a non non fungible trailer. Yeah, playable playable trailer. But that that is that only exists on an incredibly fungible piece of hardware. Mm. Funge my PS4. <laughs> <laughs>